All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another BDPA Tech and Career Talk. I am your host, Devin Jenkins, our Tech and Career Talk leader for BDPA. I am the IT pricing leader for U.S. and Canada for GE Healthcare. I currently living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Joining you from Kansas City, Missouri uh, this morning, though, as I'm in town for the Nesby Convention, uh, doing some recruiting. So it's been a great time here in Nesby. I've seen a few BDPA faces. Um, so if you are in Kansas City, I hope you're enjoying the convention as well. I um, mean, come by and say hi if you see me. So we'll get going. Um, for those who may not be as familiar with our organization, BDPA is Black Data Processing Associates. Uh, the organization was started in 1975. I kind of have two kind of main track areas. Uh, one is continuing to build computer skills and IT skills um, in our youth and students, and then also being a forum for networking and professional development uh, for professionals in the IT industry. Um, all of this works together to advance our mantra, mantra of advancing careers from the classroom to the boardroom. So thank you for joining us. Um, also with our Tech and Career Talks, these take place on the second and fourth Friday of each month. Uh, we have a range of topics, a range of speakers, uh, people in different career paths, different levels of their career, uh, working in different fields within technology. Um, but it's all about careers and technology, and we're here second and fourth Fridays of each month. So check us out. Um, I'll drop the link towards the end of the call if you want to see our previous recordings, subscribe to our YouTube channel, National BDPA, and all that good stuff. So that's all the talking uh, I want to do for right now. I'm going to pass the floor over to our special guest today, Mr. Leonard Novati, uh, the founder, CEO, and the creator of AfroCharts. And I'll let him tell you more about what that is in his own right. So Leonard, you have the floor. All right. Thank you, Devin. Thank you, everybody, for having me on the call. Um, I'm very excited to share about Afro charts and you know computer programming and all that stuff. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Now let me know once you can see it. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, so as Devin said, my name is Leonard Novati. I'm a software engineer, <laughs> also a professional DJ. I put there because nowadays it's easy you know, to become a DJ. So you usually put professional DJ there. Um, and also I'm the founder of AfroCharts uh, and also working on another platform called BitSafi. And we're gonna get into AfroCharts real quick here. Um, but before we get there, I, I wanted to start by uh, you know, talking about how I got into music uh, and, 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 and computers, and which led me to creating Afro charts uh, and other things I'm working on. You know, I was, I was born and, and grew up in a refugee camp back in, in East Africa, Tanzania. Um, I think most people heard of Tanzania because we got a big safari. People go there for safari and all that. It's a nice place for vacation. But for me, I was actually in a refugee camp in that country. And, and there, the only technology we had at that time was pretty much a, a, a radio and a, you know those digital watch you put on your wrist. So you know to stay out of trouble as young kids or teenagers, music was the way to pass time. You know? So we'll get around the radio. Uh, you know, from our friends or fathers who have one, and then we just listen to radio music, and, and then you know try to create music on our spare time. So music helped me kind of literally just uh, be myself in in this little closed world uh, of a refugee camp. Um, so when I came in the U.S. in 2007, we not really here. Um, I attended Washington High School. I was lucky to attend a high school. I came when I, was, I just turned about 17. So they still allowed me to go through high school because I was not 18 yet. Boy, you know, when I entered that school, I saw com these computer labs with a lot of computers laying around because back in the refugee camp, we never seen such a thing, right? So I fell in love with computers. I'm like, from now on, I'm just, I'm gonna learn, you know, what these little things can do. Um, just because um, uh, as a young kid, I was always curious how things work. Um, we were creating a um, uh, bicycle in wooden trees. Um, so I guess I had a little engineering mindset uh, growing up. I just didn't have the research to, uh, to do that. 
So computer, uh, I started learning, teaching myself how to program it in high school. And, and then, you know, from there, I decided to pursue a computer science degree at Stanford University in the college, um, really just to craft up my skills because teaching yourself is different than learning from the professors, but both complement one another. And then, you know, in high school and college, I was experimenting with a lot of things, you know, trying to see how I can share the love of music I have. So I had a home studio, I was recording people, uh, trying all different things. I tried to sing, uh, I couldn't sing. So I'm like, well, if I cannot, uh, if I cannot produce, I must find a way to share the love of music that I have. So I got into DJing. Uh, by the time I graduated, I was already doing like, big events. This one is from Marquette uh, Senior Hall at the Parawatomi Hotel here in Milwaukee. Um, so just really trying to see how I can keep sharing the love of music I have uh, in different ways. So <clears throat> which led me to Afrocharts, but really it didn't just, I didn't just get there like that. And the reason why is because as an African living in the US, it was really hard to um, find music from back home. Right. The only option we had was YouTube. And knowing, uh, knowing YouTube, as you know, you cannot really stream audio. You close the app, everything stops. Uh, that time they only have limited music that you can find from back home. So I wanted to solve two problems. Using the, my background as a, a, a coder and also a music lover, you know, how can I, uh, one, help artists make money, especially African artists, uh, you know, and to reduce music, uh, music piracy, which is huge back home, uh, and also make it easy for listeners, people who love music, to find those music that are coming from uh, uh, Africa. So, uh, one sad story right now in most most African countries, uh, emerging artists pay music bloggers. These are these are websites that just post music, and in return you get a link to share with your fans, right? But artists pay for those uh, those uh, those songs to be up on these music bloggers, and the problem with that, these music bloggers they get traffic, and then make money, and they don't end up they don't share with the artists. The artist just gets that promise that hey, we're gonna help you promote your music. So I was like, no, 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 it, there gotta be a better way to do this. So I created Afro Charts to help artists make money, reduce music piracy, and also. Um, make it easy for listeners around the, around the world to find African music. So as you can see, these are some of the benefits for uh, artists. Um, uh, if you're an artist, you already know to get your music on other big platforms, you have to go through our distributors, which doesn't make sense because on YouTube, you can just log in and upload and good to go. All right, so I wanted to model the same process on AfroCharts. So artists come on our platform, create their own account and they are able to upload in within like a minute, they already have a song, uh, a link to the songs that they can share. And then from there, they are able to monetize, uh, reach more audience, not just in their country, also around the world. Um, uh, you know, we do a lot of things that other streaming platforms don't do for the little guys or the emerging artists, like making sure they promote the music's visible uh, you know, playlisting, and then very importantly, they get real-time data <clears throat> so they can see how the music is doing uh, in real time, who's listening, how much they're making. You know, something that on other platform costs money and is free for artists on our platform. And yeah, again, we still in that goal of help letting artists, you know, stay in charge of the music because once somebody's Promoting or pushing your music, obviously that means they're gonna make money out of your music. But if you're the one doing the work, then you have more chance of keeping your 100% earnings. So on the, on the listener side, uh, the app is very smooth. Uh, so people can listen on our website, also on the app for Android and iPhone. We have an app for both uh, devices. And the app is really smooth. Uh, people love the most, you know, how they can, uh, browse music by countries, because uh, even me being from Tanzania, Burundi, I uh, I didn't know how music from uh, Zambia sounded like until Afrocharts, until artists started uploading music from Zambia. 
I was like, wait a minute, Zambia has some dope songs. So this literally right now is kind of helping teach people how different sounds from different countries sound like. Um, so that's our most uh, loved feature. People can listen offline. Basically thinking just like Spotify, uh, we have we pretty much have Spotify, um, uh, iTunes, and Bandcamp in one app because artists can sell, people can buy music. We have weekly charts, uh, and you know you can play on you can create unlimited playlists. Um, so that's the app. Um, you can see where users are coming from in countries where most people would not think there's music. Because when we talk about African music, we usually focus on Nigeria, Ghana, and South Africa. But for me, I'm like, you know, I'm rooting for the little guys, which is the countries where music's really huge, but they cannot break the, the international market because there's no platform like uh, that can help them do that. So when we get we get into these countries, you can see people are really loving the platform. They are using it because we are one of the first people to be in those countries. So we are worldwide. Um, that's, uh, and you can see here, people love the app. By the way, if you have not gotten the app, please go ahead and download it. Um, you know, you'll thank me later. <laughs> but people love it, and we really appreciate people's support, not just in Africa as well, here in the US. Um, now, most people ask me, why do you think this is the right time to push a platform? Like Spotify is gonna crash you, uh, Apple Music. I'm like, that's not the case really, because we are, you know, we're trying to you know, break this gap between Spotify and the emerging artists, so the upcoming artists. So right now is the right time actually for a platform like Afrochas because African music is being recognized worldwide. As you can see here, there's artists uh, featuring African artists, so our African artists featuring American artists and European artists. And um, the latest news, Afrobeats was, uh, was is now including the billboard charts. So as you can see, music is growing, um, and, uh, but still, you know, it's only more focusing on the big 1% artists. So Afrochart still has that, uh, we still, we, there's still room for us to say, hey, don't just listen to the top 10 artists, uh, you know, the big guys. We also have a bunch of songs and music coming from all these other countries and the African continent. So that being said, um, I promise that I'll talk about how, you know, actually I created this thing technically on, on the technical side. I, I was fortunate enough to do all the programming from uh, the website, backend, front end to the app, for both iPhone and Android. I'm not gonna lie, this thing would cost hundreds of thousands if I had to pay somebody to do it. But fortunately, I was able to do it. It took a little time, but uh, and a lot of sleepless nights, but it was worth it. So I I promise to share you know, some of the technology I, uh, I use. And I know some people may be thinking, look, you're gonna, you're gonna give all your secrets. Uh, you gotta give a yes to somebody's gonna crash you. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm really happy to share knowledge because the thing is, if somebody can take this knowledge and create another platform to help creators, that's the same goal I'm trying to achieve, right? Because every platform that is created, somebody benefits from it that otherwise wouldn't have benefited from other platforms. So I'm happy to share. Uh, it's a lot of years of research because there's nothing like this out there. Uh, other streaming platforms, they just hide. They don't want you to know how they did it. So this is the architect uh, of, Af of the AfroChats platform on the high level, right? So you as a listener, you know, whether you're using our website, our mobile app, you go through, you know, Cloudflare, that's the company name, and they deal with security. CDN means a content delivery network. So when you, as you saw, our platform is all about image and audio most of the times. So we don't have much text. So you need to be able to move these images and be able to make them load on the app and the website so fast so the user don't realize. And that's why you need a CDN, a content delivery network. Um, and then also, you know, they cover the security part because there's a lot of people trying to hack everybody out there. 
So you need to secure your platform, make sure user's information is not stolen uh, or your platform is not hacked and literally wiped out uh, of the face of the, uh, of the world. So uh, we go through Cloudflare, and then uh, I'll come back to this guy later, but we have what we call a load balancer. Um, this is very important. If you're building a scalable platform that you know, right now we only have, let's say we only have 10 people using it a day, but in the future, it may be 100, 500 million. So you need to be able to scale as you grow. And load balancing helps you with that, where you literally just tell it, hey, you know, I have web servers, you know, but I'm gonna put them uh, behind a load balance. And whenever the traffic grows, please add more servers as needed. So that's why you see, I, you know, we have one server and then also we can have uh, N, N servers, like as many as we want as the traffic grows. So I think last time I checked, uh, uh, Netflix uses like 500 servers, uh, you know, <laughs> because the traffic is so high. And, and that's because the load, load balancing. Um, and from there, you know, you have a bunch of uh, database servers. Uh, this is again for scalability and the availability. That's why we call it in the tech world. You cannot rely on just on one database because if that goes down, then everything is wiped out. All right, so what we usually do, we have a master, which is what we use to write. And then the master feeds to like readers database. So from there, anytime you ask, hey, can you play this song? It goes through this, but instead of going to the master, it goes to one of the readers and pulls the information back and forth. Um, so that's the server part. Now, dealing with a lot of uh, fires, uh, images and you know traffic, you cannot have your audio images via sitting on the server as you saw here. This server can be one or can be two or can be 500. So you cannot have your audio files in here. That's why you need another solution called S3 Bucket. And usually most cloud clouding, clouding company, cloud company like Amazon um, and others, they offer this service and it allows you to save your files as an object, right? So it's like separate, server they handle all the security and all you have to do is figure out where to get your files there and then you get a link uh, which is what we call the object and then from there you can link that object to whatever element you have stored in the database and every time you want to play a song it fetches that uh, link and then goes to s3 bucket and then plays it um, on the client um, so Again, for scalability and uh, availability, you gotta back up your stuff. Otherwise, you never know what could happen and you may lose everything. Um, so that's the architect. Um, now, in terms of programming languages that I used uh, on the front end, which is you know, the website um, that you see, uh, the only library I used was Bootstrap. Bootstrap helps you create like very, that lay, like lay out very quickly and, and style your, your web apps. Um, obviously that has also HTML, so you can be able to structure the pages as how you want in terms of content. Like the images, you use HTML to tell it, hey, I want this many uh, squares on the page. And in JavaScript, it's, um, it's, a, it's a, we call it a client-based language where you, know, you can do a lot of programming with it, and like validating users' data before it goes to the database, because there's people trying to hack you every time. So you gotta make sure your data is clean before you send it to to the backend. And JavaScript helps with that. Even when artists are uploading, we handle all the validation, you know, before they submit using JavaScript. Um, so it can do a lot of things on the front before you take anything to the to the back. Uh, and then on the backend, it's really straightforward. I didn't want to complicate things. So I'm using PHP, Facebook uses PHP. It's a very popular language, which that is easy to start with, to get started with. Uh, and that handles logic, API, you know, data processing and other things. So once JavaScript send whatever in the back, on the back end, and then PHP picks up. Uh, and then uh, within PHP, you can use a SQL 
SQL to read and write the database and back and forth. Um, and then for the Android app, straight up Java, um, you know, you, they made it easy. You don't have to deal with a lot of languages. Obviously, to make the communication between um, your the app and the backend. Oh, yeah, I forgot to change. Someone said backend here. The backend is, uh, you know, you have to create your own APIs. So that way the app can communicate to your backend. It's not a, just something you can book and play, but yeah. And for the iOS app, Swift, there's a language called Swift. Again, very easy. You just need to have a Mac um, and then you can get started with that as well. I, I know I probably say it's very easy because I have done it. So now it seems like it's easy. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, and then I've the only thing I forgot to add is the payment payment gateways. Uh, you never want to store users and users credit card information on your server, so you always have to use a, a payment processor. Uh, right now, we use Stripe for you know cards, credit cards, and banking and bank cards. And then we also use another called Flutterwave, which helps us accept payment through mobile money. So mobile money is huge in Africa. People don't carry really <laughs> regular wallet. It's like a digital wallet on your phone. And you know you just send that number with how much you want to pay that they store or whatever. And then the money is uh, withdrawn from your phone or your phone, your wallet, digital account. So FlatterWave helps us with that. Um, so we can accommodate people in the US or people outside of Africa and also people in Africa who don't have banks. Yeah, that's the quick, I, I know I went really quick here, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's Alpha Charts pretty much. Um, I think now we will we'll probably take questions. Yeah, we can do that and uh, definitely scan that QR code. If you're not using Afro Charts and not familiar with the platform, uh, I, I personally have used Afro Charts. It's a, a great platform. I've been exposed to music I wasn't aware of. Uh, so it's cool. So at this time, the floor is open. Uh, feel free to come off of mute and ask questions if you have any um, or any comments. And also, you can drop your questions in the chat um, if you don't want to ask them out loud. So I do see that we have one question in the chat from Kale uh, Martin. Uh, Kale, I don't know if you want to come off mute and, and, and ask this yourself or if you want me to ask it for you. I just wanted to know how long it take, took from idea to Conception to implementation because it's a lot of good, it's a lot of learning for the technology yeah. to go from your idea and the GUI front end, and then the security is the main factor. Yes. And so, yes. Yeah. Um, so, the idea was there since 2016. Um, uh, like everybody else, is like, can I do this? Would I be able to do this? So, I was, I was sitting on it since 2016. And then I actually created a website, which was like a music blog, trying to be like everybody else. I'm like, no. Nope. So in 2019, that's when I started pivoting into a streaming platform. Uh, and that's when actually I started doing the coding for the website. So the website itself, not just the front end, I also need to do the API stuff because I knew I was going to build the iPhone apps and, and Android. That took about a little to six months. You know, because I had other work as well um, to do. And then for each app, it took about four months. So I finished the web app uh, on, like in December of 2019, and then in 2020, uh, sorry, 2018, and then in, 20, in 2019, January, I started working on the Android. I finished that by April, and then I started the iPhone app uh, in April and finished it by August. Um, so we had and then we had another four months of preparing and launching in 2020. Yeah. That's a great question, Kale. Other questions from the audience? No, Leonard, you spoke a little bit about kind of setting up the payment processor. Um, so what are, what are the, I guess, the payment tiers? Uh, for Afro charts, because I, I think you have a, a free version and a premium version, if you will. So can you talk a little bit, a little bit about that? Yeah. So <clears throat> earlier I mentioned that we are like Spotify and uh, iTunes and boot, uh, uh, what is it, Bandcamp in one. Uh, basically, 
you can come on the platform stream for free. So that's the freemium model there. Um, but if you want access to more features, uh, like offline listening or be able to download playlists, albums, and whatever, then you can subscribe to our premium plan, which is about between $199 to $399. So we are trying to stay a little competitive there. Um, and then if you still want to like feel like you want to own the music, you can purchase. You can purchase albums, songs, uh, individual songs as you wish. Um, um, so yeah, three freemium subscription, uh, or you can buy music as well. Thank you for that. And just one Any other questions? question I had. Um, can you speak to maybe some of the challenges you face uh, going through the process? Some of your bigger yeah. learnings as you did this? Yeah, so the truth is, it, this is the first time I actually built a platform like this. You know, I was just out of college. Oh, what we did in college was, you know, projects, class projects. So uh, I had to learn a lot of things. PHP, I already knew, uh, but for Android, I created maybe simple apps here and there, but not, nothing like this. So I had to learn more, the best way to do things. So. Uh, same thing with the iPhone. This is the first iPhone I built. Um, so it was a lot of learning, a lot of learning curve. And, and to be honest, I think that was one of the challenges, figuring, figuring out, you know, I didn't have a mentor or somebody I can go to and say, hey, you know, I want to be able to do this. How do you do? So I had to teach myself and Google was my friend and YouTube. <laughs> yeah, and, which takes time, but, you know, yeah, we got to learn something, right, somehow. Um, and then, so that's the tech side. Um, now, here's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, I can sit down and code this thing myself. I don't have nobody bothering me, uh, pushing me. I can do it whenever I want, anytime I want. Um, and in my head, I'm like, once this thing's released, everybody's gonna love it, you know? So hey, when I uploaded the, uh, the app to the, to the app store, they denied it. They're like, nope. You know, because Apple Music is there. So they're looking at this guy like, well, what do you do? What are you trying to do with people's music? So they, their complaint was that I'm using people's music without their permission. So I had to go back and forth for a whole month with Apple, you know, showing that, no, this music I'm getting illegally and these are the contracts. They're like, well, if that's the case, you got to register a company and, and, and set it up for you under your company. So I had to do that. Uh, it was a lot of back and forth that I was not expecting from Apple, but I, and I understand they're trying to make sure uh, apps that are there are legal. But for me, I'm like, look, I'm doing everything legal, legally, so I don't know what the problem. And same thing with uh, uh, Google Play, it was the same thing. Oh, you're using screenshots with people's image. I'm like, it's a music app. <laughs> uh, so that was a big challenge. And then once we launched, you know, we, we struggled to actually start getting people to listen, how we get the word out. That was huge. Um, and thankfully, the way I structure my, my team, uh, it's, uh, you know, we have like individuals in Africa, or different African countries, and those are, you know, they're going out. We call them general managers, but really they're like directors of each country and they go out, talk to artists, artists understand, and then they bring the music over from there. The promotion starts and people start discovering the, the platform. Very nice, very nice. Uh, so I see Kale has another question in the chat. Uh, she asked, are some of the artists on Spotify as well? Uh, yes. And what I always tell artists is that we, we're, we are not limiting you from putting your music anywhere else because that would make sense. We want them to put music anywhere that they can be heard, make money. Now, here's the thing. They're on Spotify, but they're not getting the love that they want, they need. So you put your music on Spotify as an emerging artist, it just goes in the back. And Spotify, like other platform for African music, we only get a playlist, <laughs> right? We only get a playlist. And as you know, Africa is huge, different countries. Once you actually use Afro as you see, there's no way you can categorize all music from Africa as one 
one genre. All right, so yes, the music is there, but once they once they put the music, they realize like nothing moves. So they they come to us because the whole platform platform is dedicated to African music, which means. 90% of all people coming to our platform are looking for African music, which increase, increases the chances of the, these artists getting discovered better than if they were on Spotify. So that's why they, 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 uh, they stay on our platform or even promote our platform more or the links on our platform more. Thanks for that question, Kale. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions or comments from anyone in the audience? And if not, Leonard, any uh, closing thoughts from you and how can everyone connect with you? Yeah, so I, um, I'm all about sharing knowledge uh, and helping the next person who's whatever, whatever you're creating. Um, so I'm always here to help uh, or chat I um I'm, I'm I can be reached at in LinkedIn um on social media as well for Afrocharts. Usually I'm, I'm looking at those regularly. Um, and we do have a contact us form on the website that usually comes to us as well. Um, and um, um, yeah, my email is uh, I think I had it there. It's Leonard at Afrocharts.com. So you can reach me there as well. All right. Well, thank you, Leonard, for coming and sharing with us today. Uh, like I say, I'm definitely a, a big um, fan of Afro Charts. Um, I, I enjoy using the app myself. I'm mean, hearing new artists that you know I, I've never been made aware of. So uh, yeah. thanks for creating this platform. Uh, you know the love I have for music. So thank you for that. Uh, so if you look in the chat, I put the link to Afro Charts in there. Uh, you can download the app on your phones. Um, check out the website. I also put a link to the Leonard's LinkedIn page if you want to connect with him after the call. Um, the last two links I want to share, one, um, I definitely want to encourage you to go register for our BDPA conference, which will be in Atlanta, Georgia in August. So I believe that's like August 17th through, well, I can look at it, I don't have to guess. Uh, August 17th through the 19th, I'm at the Western Peachtree Plaza in Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, make sure you go and register for the conference. You don't want to miss that. And then also, um, I just put the link in here for our Tech and Career Talk webpage. Uh, so if you go to bdpa.org backslash tech in career talks, uh, we will, you can see this, the recording from this talk, as well as all of our previous talks. Um, they're also on our YouTube channel. So National BDPA, go out there, like, subscribe, whatever, everything else the influencers say these days. So <laughs> do that for BDPA. So thank you all for joining. Uh, thank you, Leonard, again, for sharing with us. Uh, we will wrap this up today. Um, if anyone is in Kansas City, enjoy the Nesby Convention. I'm about to head down there shortly to the convention center. Uh, but thank you all. Stay safe. Stay blessed. We'll see you next time. Right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.